Sorry, it's just a little bit uncomfortable. But please argue about it in the comments below. Don't do that. Be be nice to each other. A couple of weeks ago, I filmed this little mental well-being shoot for Get Images in a small but really nice apartment in Gothenburg. I did bring two lights, as I often do, and I've talked about that in previous videos. And as you can see uh, from the other camera that I have the uh, 120D uh, with a lantern, and behind me there's the 60D uh, pretending to be uh, a sun again. But I did not end up using any of them because the apartment had this really nice big window which just gave this really nice natural light and it was an overcast day so it felt like really nice and even throughout the whole shoot. And I'm really happy with the footage. However, I did end up working with the model's face just a little bit in post-production, in DaVinci Resolve, just to make her face pop a little bit more. I made the light side of her face a little bit lighter and the dark side of her face a little bit darker. Um, and I think that just did a lot to the uh, footage. So this week, I was thinking I'd show you uh, that and also show you how I did everything I did with that video portrait that you saw in the beginning of this video. Because the face refinement tool in DaVinci Resolve 19 beta has gotten a pretty big update and I think it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Uh, you can do a lot of good stuff. Let's uh, jump into DaVinci Resolve and check out the face refinement tool. Are you staying over there? Because because you, you might want to get a little bit closer. It's going to be hard to see. All right. All right. I just wanted to begin by saying this face obviously is in no need of the face refinement tool, really. Uh, most faces are not, and this tool should be used very carefully because it's really easy to go overboard and create unrealistic looking uh, people with plasticky skin that just does not represent the way people look in real life. So when you use the face refinement tool, do it sparingly um, unless you're obviously going for something abstract or unrealistic, then go nuts. Alright, so we're in uh, DaVinci Resolve. Uh, we're in the edit page right now, but I'm going to jump into the color tab. Uh, yes, we got a node right here that I've already created. Um, and I've renamed it Face. Uh, in the effects window right here, I'm going to search for face. You'll see that the face refinement, so the face refinement effect is going to appear right here. I'm going to drag that on to our node. If you've used the face refinement effect before, you probably notice that there is a lot more going on. Let's just start by hit the detect faces in frame button. As you can see, it found our face. Uh, after that, I'm going to just track this backward and forwards. So we have the face tracked throughout our entire clip. There we go, face is tracked. Let's just look at this once with the overlay. I think that looks pretty great. Very precise. I'm going to turn off show overlay up here just so we get rid of that uh, overlay. The first thing we see here is the sort of beauty skin smoothing effect. I use that sometimes, uh, often when, you know, maybe when I'm close to a person like this. I mean, close up, no skin or very few people's skin look amazing on that distance. So it so might be nice to just bump up that smoothness just just a little bit. I'm going to show you how it looks when we go too far as well. So this is obviously without anything and with this turned up <laughs> to max, you can see that it looks a little bit crazy. 
if you reset this and then just instead of using it like this I would just scroll over here because that will do it in increments instead and just bump that up just a little bit just so we get a little bit of softness like using a, a mist filter but only for the skin so let's say we're happy with that the next thing that I did was actually adjust the light on her face on the left and the right side as you can see already she already has really nice light on her left side from the window and she has a really nice soft uh, shadow on her right side but I want to just enhance that a little bit make the dark side slightly darker and the light side mm, maybe a little bit lighter or just leave it as it is let's have a look so as you can see right here there's a tab called side lighting you can lift the left side and you can lift the right side so let's go to the right side and just lower the shadow right here can you see that I'm gonna go too far again just to show you what it does now we've gone all the way that's too much so let's bring it back and go slowly again maybe maybe something like that <clears throat> let's turn it off on off on might be a little bit too much but I'll leave it for the tutorial sake just to make you know it obvious what we're doing uh, so let's say we wanted to actually lift the left side a little bit to make it a little bit lighter maybe maybe something like that off on off on it's obviously a bit too much right now but stay with me you can also make the transition between the left and the right side harder or softer take a look at this right now I put it all the way to the left which is not so soft she has a pretty strong line going across her face right now but if you're pulling it all the way to the other side it's a much smoother transition from left to right which works really well in this case when we've gone sort of a little bit too far with each side so that's so this is pretty much where I would uh, leave this shot um, I might go in to the uh, eyes section and just add a little bit of sharpening to the eyes this is super sensitive so you really need to go to just a few points to make this sharper let me show you what happens if you go all the way it just looks it just looks a little bit insane so I would probably just raise that a little bit maybe raise the brightening a little bit too same here I'll show you what happens when we go all the way across it looks like an episode of Stargate shout out to all the Stargate fans out there uh, so let's uh, turn that off maybe just raise it slightly slightly we also have this eye light that affects sort of the area around the eyes again if I drag this all the way across you see what happens it's like someone's shining a light in her face uh, but again just using this little bit little bit and down here we have the uh, eye bag removal that I talked about before uh, which is uh, pretty useful um, for people like me uh, also use this sparingly it does look again like, I mean it kind of looks unnatural when you pull it all the way up I don't think anyone looks like that really um, but if you want to you can you know just add a little bit but it quickly it really quickly looks way too soft and way too blurred out it just looks unnatural so be careful with this we also have these fun new additions uh, for <laughs> eyeshadow that you saw in the beginning. So you can actually add like an eyeshadow for uh, the upper uh, eyelids, <laughs> the lower eyelids if you want to. 
And as you can see, if I play this, it's just tracked so well to the footage. Obviously, it's really easy to go too far and make it look uh, unnatural here as well. But a really uh, cool effect, uh, nonetheless. Same thing here, you have lips, you can change the uh, color of uh, her lips. There's a lot of tools here that you need to adjust to make sure that the lips are actually matching with the shape of your model's lips. Uh, as you can see here right now, we have uh, some offset going on, uh, but it's pretty easy to just work with the tools in here to make sure that you cover the area that is supposed to be covered and nothing else. <laughs> there you go. Uh, there's also a part for like you can make the teeth wider. Obviously, she's not really giving us a very toothy smile right now, so I can't really show you that. Maybe I could do it on myself. Yeah. Then there's just generally a lot of tools for refining the mask, refining the skin uh, all over the face. Uh, and I think it can even affect the skin generally in, in the entire clip if you wanted to and not just affect the face, you can also affect uh, wherever else uh, the software detects skin. Yeah, I think um, I think that's um, everything that I wanted to show you. A super nice tool if you want to just sort of perfect your video portraits and make them just a little bit better in post-production. Obviously, it's better to try to nail everything on site, but when you can't or if something's gone wrong, at least it's nice to know that there are tools uh, like this, like the face refinement tool, like the real light effect that we talked about a couple of weeks ago, uh, that can actually do a lot to improve your footage in post. All right, I think that's it for this video. Um, thank you uh, very much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye.